Did you know that there is a powdered chlorine that you can use to disinfect surfaces and even disinfect your water in an emergency? And best of all, it has a 10 year shelf life. Hi, I'm Kyleen. And I'm Jonathan, and we are the Provident Preppers. Calcium hypochlorite is one of the basic things that every prepper should have on hand. It does a great job of disinfecting counters, laundry, and water. This little bag of calcium hypochlorite will disinfect more than 10,000 gallons of water. It's a lot of water. In this video, we will show you exactly what kind of calcium hypochlorite you should buy, how to safely store it, and how to use it as a disinfectant. Stay tuned. Calcium hypochlorite is something that every prepper should have. Some of the basic uses for chlorine include a surface disinfectant, water disinfectant, and a laundry disinfectant. You may be wondering why we don't recommend that you go to the store and just purchase regular liquid bleach for emergency storage, but it has some disadvantages. For instance, it only has a six month shelf life and it continues to become weaker and weaker and won't do the job of disinfecting that you purchased it for. It is significantly more expensive. It takes up a lot more storage space and it's not very portable. One of the great advantages of calcium hypochlorite is it has a 10 year shelf life, as long as you keep it cool, dry, dark, and protected. The best way to use calcium hypochlorite is by taking that 68% calcium hypochlorite and making a stock solution with it. So you just need to take one and a half teaspoons of the granulated or powdered calcium hypochlorite and add it to one cup of water and mix it in. Then you use this stock solution to disinfect at the same ratios that you do regular chlorine bleach. This recipe comes from a military document, Sanitary Control and Surveillance of Field Water Supplies on the 1st of May, 2010, page 70. On this table, it shows us that if you put a half of a cup of 68% dry calcium hypochlorite into one gallon of water, you create a stock solution that is about 5%, which can be used for disinfecting purposes. We've included the link to this source so that you can go directly to the source and calculate it out for yourself if you would like. But a good recipe is one and a half teaspoons of dry calcium hypochlorite to one cup of water to create that 5% stock solution. When you purchase calcium hypochlorite, you want to make sure that you are getting 68% active ingredient. The other 32% should be inert salts. Be careful when you look at that label, you shouldn't have a bunch of other ingredients on there because some of them can be very dangerous. Make sure that you're just using pure calcium hypochlorite. Now let's talk about the best way to store calcium hypochlorite because you need to be really careful. It is a dangerous substance. Calcium hypochlorite can be your friend, but it can also be your enemy. So it's really important to understand calcium hypochlorite. It reacts with reducing agents combustible materials, organic materials, acids, and moisture. It is corrosive to aluminum and steel, and it is slightly corrosive to glass and stainless steel. Calcium hypochlorite is hazardous if it comes in contact with your skin or eyes, or if it is ingested or inhaled. It does not react with polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, ritin, PVDF, and Teflon. So those are good mediums to store it in. We have some friends who are amazing preppers and they had created these water kits so that they could have a portable way of filtering and cleaning water. In these kits they bought three new aqua rain filters. Then they put powdered chlorine into a plastic bottle which was then put into a Ziploc bag and they had a bottle of Polar Pure in each one of these three kits. They tucked them away like good preppers do and came back in a couple of years to make sure everything was good. And here is what they found. To their surprise, these Aqua Rain filters in all three of these kits were completely destroyed. As you can see here, they were corroded and split and they were just a total mess. 
And I think that's interesting because the safety data sheet on calcium hypochlorite says that it is only slightly corrosive to stainless steel. This was stainless steel, and in my opinion, that's a lot more than slightly corrosive. So you have to be super careful with this stuff. Unfortunately, this shows a thousand dollars worth of water filters totally gone. And we had an incident where we had purchased a new water filter that came with chlorine and these batteries in it. And when we opened it after a few years, we noticed that the chlorine had completely corroded these batteries. So be really careful whenever you're storing chlorine. Now that we've scared you, know that calcium hypochlorite is a good thing to store, but you have to respect it and you have to work within certain limits. We store calcium hypochlorite in glass jars. And then because calcium hypochlorite is so corrosive to metal, we store it with a plastic lid. Now, the reason why glass is so good is because it's non-permeable. It's not gonna allow those gases out into the room. Now, the plastic is permeable, so you can get a little off-gassing through those plastic lids, but we haven't had a problem with it. We've stored it this way for several years now. And when you pick up the bottle of calcium hypochlorite and you smell, you cannot sense any odor of chlorine near that bottle, even with that plastic lid. This is a label that we have created to go on those jars. If you visit the Provident Prepper, how to disinfect water using calcium hypochlorite, you will find this printable label. We'll put a card in the corner to direct you to that site so that you can find it. Now you can choose to do a couple different things. I usually put the entire label on. It's big and it's bulky, but I want all of this information for whoever is using that bottle. And so if we're gonna end up giving this to our neighbor, I want them to know what's in this bottle and exactly how to use it. And that's why I put the entire label on. You can just cut out those two little tables and tape those on there. I use packing tape because it stays on there better. But if you just put those two labels on there, then you know how to make the stock solution and you have the recipe for water disinfection should you need it. In the first publication of our book, The Provident Prepper, the recipe for the 5% stock solution was incorrect. So if you have purchased one of these copies, pull out your book to page 110 and change this recipe in ink in that book. It is corrected in all of the later publications, but make sure that yours has the correct ratio for this recipe for calcium hypochlorite. It should be one and a half teaspoons of calcium hypochlorite with one cup of water. Once you've put it in the right container, you just need to place it in a cool, dry, dark, protected location. If you notice the bottle on the left-hand side, I have actually just taken the entire bag and put it inside of the jar and put the lid on it. Originally, when I did this, I thought that would be the best of all worlds. But the bag that it was in, the calcium hypochlorite actually started to degrade the bag. And when I went to use it, the bag was shredded and I had all kinds of pieces of this like aluminized bag inside of my granules. So that wasn't a good thing. The dry tech bags do not seem to degrade the way that some of the other bags do. I still would not store it directly in the bag for any long period of time but it would be okay to leave it inside the original bag and store it inside of the jar. Personally, I think it's a better idea to open up the bags and store them in a glass jar. But whatever works for you is fine. Sometimes it would be a good idea to have a little portable sized container of calcium hypochlorite that you could take with you in the event that you need to evacuate. We also have one in our first aid kit. But the problem with this is that it's in plastic and it off gases through that plastic. When we first did this, I had taken some to one of the expos that we went to and I packaged it inside of a tote that had some metal things in it, like metal picture frames and things like that that we needed for the expo. And when we came home, I just left it all in there. And then when I opened it up, I don't know, maybe six months later, I was amazed that the metal frame had corroded and I couldn't figure out why that would happen until I noticed this little bottle of calcium hypochlorite. So this is a good idea, but you need to put it in a secondary container 
to prevent those chlorine gases from doing damage to what is what else is in your pack. I would make sure that it wasn't just a Ziploc bag because we can see from our friends who put it inside of a Ziploc bag, that didn't work so well for them. So make sure that it's something that is not permeable. Now let's talk about using calcium hypochlorite to disinfect water. As with regular chlorine bleach, you're going to use eight drops of 5% chlorine stock solution to one gallon of clear water. And you need to allow at least 30 minutes of contact time. You will want to stir that in and just let it sit and do its job. This is a water disinfection table that just shows you how many drops you would want to use of either regular liquid bleach or the chlorine stock solution. Before you add bleach, you're gonna to wanna to clarify your water and make sure that you use the clearest water possible. And if your water is pretty clear, you can use two drops. But if it's cloudy or questionable, you're gonna to wanna to use four drops for one quart. If you're using calcium hypochlorite to disinfect water in a 55 gallon drum, you want to use a quarter of a teaspoon of dry granules. Then you're going to let that sit for 24 hours with the lid on, and then come back and just check and make sure that you can still smell a little odor of chlorine. That means that everything has been cleaned up and there was still some residual. If you don't smell that chlorine, you're going to want to add another quarter teaspoon and then give it another day and just make sure that you come back and, and have that little bit of residual. Now we're teaching you how to use chlorine to disinfect water, but it's really important that you understand that it, chlorine will not deactivate some protozoa such as Giardia and Cryptosporidium. They are a larger protozoa and they have a thick outer shell. Chlorine is fantastic when it comes to killing viruses, but it's not so good when it comes to protozoa. An ideal way to remove those protozoa is to run them through a good filter. That will usually also take out the excess chlorine. Almost any good filter is gonna remove the protozoa, but you really need a special filter like a carbon filter in order to remove the chlorine. If you click the card in the corner, we will take you to a post where we go through all kinds of different water filters and help you know what to look for in a water filter that's gonna meet your specific needs. The safest way to disinfect your water is to boil it. You will want to get this water to 212 degrees for one minute and that will kill all the pathogens. We only recommend using the chlorine to disinfect your water if you don't have the ability to boil it. Another use for chlorine is laundry disinfection. I like to make a stock solution in an old bleach bottle that we have. I've marked this bottle so I know exactly the ratios and how much calcium hypochlorite I need to create that 5% stock solution. And I just put a funnel in the top and I put the calcium hypochlorite in and then I fill it up with water. And then I use this all the time in my laundry. I just put three quarters of a cup of the 5% stock solution in a regular size load. Now this doesn't have all the whiteners and brighteners that regular liquid bleach has in it, but for us, it does a fantastic job of getting the clothes clean and they're disinfected, they smell nice, and it costs significantly less. Calcium hypochlorite is also excellent for surface disinfection. To sanitize surfaces, we use one third of a cup of the stock solution of calcium hypochlorite with one gallon of water. We wash the surfaces and let them air dry. If I'm cleaning and disinfecting my toilets, I would probably use a half of a cup, not a third of a cup. Um, so you can play with it depending on what surface and what your disinfecting needs are. Hopefully you've gotten the message that everyone should have some calcium hypochlorite. One of these bags of calcium hypochlorite will disinfect at least 10,000 gallons of water, in addition to meeting all of your other disinfection needs. The least expensive way to buy this, if you can find several people that want this and you can do a group buy, you can buy a case of 12 for a lot less than if you're buying individual packages. One of the things that we did to help our neighborhood be more prepared is we purchased an entire case of the calcium hypochlorite and packaged them into the bottles with the plastic lids, with the labels, and then we shared some with some of our friends so that it would be in their home as well as in our home when something happens. Because you really don't need a lot of this, but you do need some of it. We invite you to check out the Provident Prepper, disinfecting water using calcium hypochlorite. This post has a lot of great information, including that label. And one of our YouTube videos that you might be interested in is making water safe to drink. In this video, we go through seven disinfection techniques that can make your water safe to consume. 
And then we created another video all about water storage because the water that you have stored in your own home is the safest water source that you can have during an emergency. So it's really important that you store water. In this video, Emergency Water Storage, we walk you through exactly how to safely store water. Check them out. We use calcium hypochlorite as a disinfectant in our home every day because it's less expensive. I always keep this stock bottle mixed up and ready to go. In a year's period of time, we will go through one bottle of calcium hypochlorite, which is two one pound bags. So as you can see, it doesn't take very much to get the job done. In the description of this video, we will leave a link to the right kind of calcium hypochlorite to get if you want to use it as a disinfectant to disinfect water during an emergency or as a disinfectant in your home. And now for the question of the day. What are the ways that you use chlorine as a disinfectant? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.